right there. They're so pretty. Welcome to today's video. We are home from Atlanta. It's been a couple of days and I am ready to make some more sourdough bread. Lots of people wanted me to show my recipe. So I'm gonna show you. My starter is ready. It is thriving. Look at it. It has been fed and thriving. And see all the bubbles? That's what you want it to look like. And it is like bubbly and happy. What I'm gonna do is I put my scale here and I have it on grams. I'm going to do 300 grams of the starter here. So if you look right here, 300 grams of the starter right there. Reset your scale back to zero, and then you're going to get your salt. And I use this one. I just get this from Costco, and I do 22 grams. 22 grams of salt. I set my scale back to zero, and now I'm gonna do 750 grams of room temperature water. I'm gonna need a thousand grams of bread flour. I'm gonna use the rest of this and then I'm just going to go put more in my little container here. But I use the bread flour from Costco. Here's my big bag of the flour that I get from Costco. I'm just gonna dump it in my container. Okay, so now I'm adding more flour to get the thousand grams. Got a thousand grams. Some people like to use the Danish dough whisk and I just don't use that. I use the bread hook for mine and I only do it for a few minutes and I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. This just speeds the time up. There's really no right or wrong way. I feel like everybody makes their sourdough different, but this is how I do mine. This is what it should look like. It's kind of a mess, but don't worry. What I did, I scraped off the outside here and I brought it off the center. And now I'm gonna let it sit on the counter for one hour. I am going to cover it with a damp towel and I will come back and show you guys the stretch and folds. I need to feed the starter again so it can start growing, but I was gonna tell you guys, I've tried making my own and it is really hard. So if you can find someone that has a bunch of sourdough starter, and you can use theirs to get started. That's the way to the way to do it for sure. How I feed my starter is I do about a fourth of a cup of all-purpose flour. So you want to make sure you feed your starter with the same flour every time. You don't want to mix it up and do like bread flour one time and then the next day you do all-purpose flour. You want to make sure you stick with the same one every time that you feed your starter. Sometimes you can tell if it needs a little bit more, but what I originally start with is a fourth of a cup and then I add a fourth of a cup of water and then I'll show you the consistency. And if I need to add a little more flour, to make it the consistency that I need. I'll show you that too. So the water is dumped in there and the flour and I'm going to just use a knife and this is how I mix it up in mine. I don't have one of those huge containers because I don't feel like I make more than two loaves at a time and I space this out. I make, I probably make about two loaves twice a week. And so anyway, so I don't feel like I need one of those huge containers. So this is plenty for us. If you're planning on making a ton, get one of those huge containers. So this is the consistency that right now I actually don't like how like runny it is. I need to add a little bit more flour just because I feel like it needs to be just a little bit thicker. It's still runny, but it's like thicker. I don't know how to explain it. it. Almost looks like kind of sticky. That's what you want. So you'll just put it in kind of like a warmer area in your house and it thrives really well like in warmer temperatures. So it is kind of like a pet. Like you have to feed it every day. If you don't plan on making bread like a lot, you can put it in the fridge, but you want to make sure you feed it at least twice before you make bread again after you take it out of the refrigerator. It's been an hour. So now I'm going to do like a stretch and fold. My hands are a little bit wet. You're just going to take one hand and kind of go underneath it. It's so hard to hold the camera here. And then you're going to fold it over and you're going to do that like stretch fold and you do it about twice. So I'm pulling from the bottom and folding it over and you'll notice over like the next probably two of these, it's going to start looking smooth. That was my first stretch and fold. I'm going to wait 30 minutes, come back and do another one. So put your towel back on, wait 30 minutes and then come okay, back. Here's my next one now. Same exact thing. Pull, turn, pull, turn, and then you'll cover it with the towel again and let it rest for another 30 minutes. And then you'll do a coil fold. It's been 30 minutes, so we're gonna do a coil fold. So I got my hands, both hands wet. And I'm going to be picking up kind of like this and then you're gonna be tucking the edges. It's so hard to show you like this. I might have to have someone hold the camera. I know that was kind of hard to see, but that is what it's looking like now, okay? So I'm gonna let this sit again, cover with the towel, the damp towel. Let it sit for another 30 minutes and I'm gonna do one more of those. It's been 30 minutes, so you're gonna pick it up and just kind of tuck it under. 
and you do that about like two or three times. So like this, and then it gets, I guess you guys can see it will be really smooth and then some bubbles will form on top. That is it. And then I'm gonna cover it one more time. Let it rest for one hour. It's been an hour and you can see that the dough is dome shaped on top and it's got some bubbles, which is what you want. So now I'm gonna tip this over onto the counter. So I'm just letting it fall from it. Nice and easy. Comes out of the bowl really good. Got my bench scraper here. I'm gonna divide this into two equal pieces. And you can wait if you want to, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. I got one wet hand here. Got my bench scraper with a little bit of water on as well. And then you're gonna take your bread. This is, if you wanted to do like add-ins, this is where you would do that. So if you wanna put like cinnamon chips in it or cheddar um, cheese and jalapeno, that's another really good one. That, this is where you would typically do that. I am just making just plain sourdough bread. So you're just gonna fold it out and you wanna stretch the dough, but you don't wanna have, like you don't wanna tear it. So you just wanna stretch it out with your bench scraper in a wet hand. Enough that it's flat. And then you're going to take it and you're gonna fold it over one way and then fold it over the other. Like it's giving it a little hug right here. And then you're gonna fold it like over like this. And then what you're gonna do is kind of into a candy cane shape. So you're gonna bring the dough up and then bring it back down. You're gonna kind of tuck in to make it a nice like ball. Rolled them both out and now I'm going to cover it with a damp towel for 30 minutes. Okay, okay. So it's been a half hour so I'm gonna take off the towel. So I'm gonna pick up my dough, flip it over smooth side and you're gonna give it your, its final shaping. So I'm just pulling one side here and I'm gonna bring it over and then I'm gonna pull this side and bring it over to where this is gonna, the opposite side is going to give it a big hug. And then the bottom piece is the last of it. Tuck it over and then you just roll it into a nice big ball here. And then you're going to place it in your banneton, smooth side down like that. And I already put some flour in it. So here's my first one, here's my second one. And I'm gonna let this rest for five minutes. So it's been five minutes. So now what we're gonna do is you're gonna take like the corners of the bread and just kind of bring it to the center. You're gonna pinch it. This just kind of helps like give it a nice tighter shape to your dough. And look like that you're gonna sprinkle just a little bit of flour on top and then you're going to cover it with these and then you're gonna set it in your refrigerator overnight and then bake it in the morning and that is how you make sourdough bread and then in the morning I'll take it back out and show you how we like score it and do the other steps it is the next day and I got my um, Dutch oven here. But let me tell you guys one thing about this Dutch oven. I would recommend to not to get this color. As you can see, like all the speckles and so get a different color. But you're gonna put your Dutch oven in your oven and you're going to warm it up just like this without any bread in it. You're gonna heat it up to 500 degrees and then you're gonna like take it out and then turn it down to 420. But so I already took off my little thing from yesterday. I have some parchment paper here. You're gonna stick it over the top of your bowl like so. And then you're gonna take a plate and you're going to flip your bowl upside down so that your bread just kind of falls. So here's this. You're gonna take this off just like that. And then it's gonna look like this. Now I'm going to make like a little design on it. I'm not gonna do anything super fancy for this. For beginners, I'll be honest, like I just do a very simple design where I just I cut it down the middle. Nothing too crazy on the cutting. Got the Robo Rock on, so sorry if that's the noise you're hearing in the background. But I took this out, it's really hot. So I'm stick it in like that, put your lid back on. I think I told you I said turn down the oven to 4, 420 and you're gonna cook it for 45 minutes. And then it's done. Guys, I got them out. This is what they look like. 
see how nice and dome shaped that is? Right there. They're so pretty. There you go.